Despite its futuristic look, F-7U Cutlass, the American jet fighter of the early Cold War era, suffered from numerous technical issues that caused the U.S. Navy to halt any further production. Besides, none of the produced ones got the approval to join the Air Force. It killed multiple pilots only during test operations, and that is why it was given the nickname of Widowmaker. In 1945, Chance Vought entered the United States Navy competition for a new carrier-capable day fighter. Vought's submission for the competition was F-7U Cutlass. Although denied by Vought, the main idea and the aerodynamics analyses were obtained from German Arado and Messerschmitt companies at the end of World War II. F-7U Cutlass looked way ahead of its time. It had no tail, wide-swept wings with an area of 46 square meter. The first fighter with fully steerable nose gear placing the pilot four meters in the air. The futuristic Cutlass had the first hydraulic system at a high pressure, twice the pressure of the systems on other Navy jets, and all hydraulic flight controls with built-in artificial feel, which restored control surface feedback to the pilot. Despite all of these features, F-7U Cutlass later proved to be a disaster in the air. The U.S. Navy gave the green light to Vought to produce and test three experimental airplanes of model XF-7U-1. The first test flight, conducted in September 1948, seemed promising. Although there were still a lot of other tests left to be done, the initial performance persuaded the U.S. Navy to place an order for 14 of F-7U-1. Due to the failure of the three XF-7U-1s over the course of two years, many modifications were made to the design. Out of the three experimental jets, one crashed in early 1949 after multiple cases of malfunctioning and repairs. It took the life of William Miller, and his body was never found. In late 1949, Vought test pilot Paul Thayer flew another experimental jet and crashed, but he survived the accident. Despite many modifications to the afterburners of the jet, the engine of the last experimental jet caught fire and was lost in July 1950. Once again, Thayer got lucky and survived. Since the U.S. Navy had high hopes for the Cutlass, they pushed Lt. Edward Whitey Feitner, the former program manager of the F-7U, to fly the aircraft in the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels. In the 1953 show, he hit the afterburner and went straight up. Back then, there was no other fighter capable of doing such a thing. Then he lost the hydraulics but he could not eject since he needed an altitude of at least 457 meters. Before reaching the desired altitude, the Cutlass headed towards the ground. He eventually could control the jet and landed with one engine in flames. Later, while traveling to an air show at Naval Air Station Glenview in Chicago, Illinois, another Blue Angel pilot, Lieutenant Harding McKnight, experienced an engine flameout in his Cutlass forcing him to make an emergency landing at NAS Glenview. Feitner, who was flying with him in another Cutlass, was redirected to land at Chicago's former Orchard Air Park, which had been expanded and renamed O'Hare Airport. Given that the runway had just been completed, Feitner's F-7U became the first aircraft to land on the new runway for Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Catastrophic results of tests proved that this model had fundamental technical issues. None of the 14 F-7U-1s built between 1950 and 1952 was approved to join the squadron service. In 1948, Vought submitted its proposal to the Navy for a new Cutlass model, F-7U-2. The Navy placed an order of 88 jets of this model. However, none of them were built since shortly after that, Vought introduced F-7U-3. This model offered more visibility to the pilot and had more powerful engines a longer and stronger airframe, and better access panel for maintenance. In December 1951, F-7U-3 had its first test flight. The test pilot, Wally Shira, who later became an astronaut, believed that the jet is still prone to accidents despite all the improvements compared to the F-7U-1. In 1954, after years of testing, three carrier sustainability trials, and around a decade of research and development, the first of 13 F-7U-3 Cutlass fleet squadrons became operational. The pilots found Cutlass the most complicated jet to maintain. 
Back then, there were multiple high-profile jets in operation, such as the North American FJ-1 Fury, the Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star, and the McConnell F-2H-2 Banshee, and they also had accidents. However, none could even get close to the record of the F-7U. On December 11, 1954, during the launching ceremony of the USS Forrestal at Newport News, Virginia, Lt. J.W. Hood flew a F-7U-3. Having a malfunction of the wing locking mechanism, the airframe broke apart, an engine blew up, and Hood was killed. On July 14, 1955, before the first deployment of a Cutlass Squadron at sea, Lt. Commander J. Alkire flew an F-7U. While descending onto the USS Hancock with the Cutlass nose pointing upwards, the F-7U hit the aircraft carrier and turned into flames. Alkire did not survive the crash. USS Hancock had a straight deck. When landing a jet to stop within a reasonable distance and avoid hitting other aircrafts on the deck, pilots were supposed to hook the aircraft tail into an arresting wire or land into a series of canvas safety nets and metal cables. On November 4, 1955, when Lt. George Milliard tried to land, the tail hook of the Cutlass floated over all 12 arresting wires. Given his low altitude and speed, he could not go around. Milliard went into the barrier, where the nose gear failed. The strut drove up into the cockpit and into the base of the sea, triggering the ejection seat firing mechanism and knocking off the canopy. Milliard was flown 61 meters forward. He hit the tail of a Douglas A-1 Sky Raider and later died of his injuries. After this accident, the captain ordered all F-7Us off his ship. The F-7U-3 inherited its main flaw from the F-7U-1, two lazy Westinghouse jet engines that were unable to provide enough thrust. Although Westinghouse promised much more powerful engines, they could not deliver the thrust they promised. By this time, 180 F-7U-3s were built. But given the performance results, Navy officials had already decided to ground all the F-7Us. Vought had already built 98 F-7U-3Ms, which was the first fighter jet capable of carrying Sparrow air-to-air -air missiles. Even this did not persuade the Navy officials to change their decision. Eventually, after 55,000 hours of flight, which resulted in 78 accidents, the infamous F-7U was retired with the record of highest accident rate of all swept-wing fighters. Although F-7Us were useless in the air, on the ground they were used for maintenance training. The F-7U also appeared in hobby shops. Automotive industry was also inspired by the look of the F-7U. In 1954, Oldsmobile, the car manufacturer, named one of its sports coupes after the F-7U. Chevrolet also got inspiration from Cutlass for the hood ornament of its Bel Air model.